What's up, Soul? Here's Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Vibes it up in the kitchen as usual. 2021, second recipe, Tasty Tuesday. You know, I gotta come hard. I promise you guys that, right? Curry crab with shrimp and potato. We're stretching this for everybody to get a little taste. Irie, you're gonna love this one, man. Got a nice big pot here, something with a lid. Medium flame, and I'm gonna go on two tablespoons of olive oil. And right away, I'm gonna go in with a medium diced or sliced onion. And we've got about six cloves of garlic here that I just smashed with my knife. And we want that to come up to temperature. And I've also got two riri riri peppers. We call these coffee pepper in, in Trinidad and Tobago, but my Guyanese brothers and sisters, they call it riri riri peppers. I'm putting them whole, but later on I'm gonna break them because I want to release that heat. Use whatever spicy pepper you have or you can get access to or what you can handle. Turn the heat down to low and let that gently come up to temperature and create that niceness there. As it gently does its thing there, I'm gonna go in with some cumin seeds. And that is about half of a teaspoon, also just a quarter teaspoon of cumin seeds. I have my crab already prepped here and that was three crabs, just ocean crabs. It's been cleaned and cut up into pieces like half. And I also have one pound of um, 2125 shrimp which has been cleaned and um, deveined and both the crab and the shrimp has been washed with cold water and lemon juice drained and set aside there. I also have, while we're doing the also halves, six medium potato which were peeled washed and I have it in water there just so it doesn't go discolored. Give that another quick little stir and we're gonna leave this in here for about four minutes because we really want to bring out the flavors of the cumin or jeera, the garlic and the onion but again very low heat yeah the kitchen should already be smelling just brilliant yeah we got brilliant smells as well too you notice the edges of the garlic is starting to go brown, so that's an indicator. It's time for that curry powder. And we're going in with a tablespoon and a half of your favorite curry powder. In my case here, I'm using my own blend. Don't hate, appreciate, and ask. And maybe one of these days I'll share it with you guys. With all that niceness happening here now, my heat is still on low. The whole idea here is to toast them to toast the spices we've talked about this before toast the spices which makes up that curry powder and it's like a wet toast because we have oil in there and to also cook out the rawness out of that curry because the last thing you want is that grittiness on your um on your um, you know your taste buds you know your taste buds deserve better than that man ground black pepper very low heat yeah we're gonna give it another quick stir and now we're gonna crank up that heat to medium. And right away, we're going in with some water. And that water is to help cook out that rawness we're talking about. You know, and the one thing you will notice when I make curry, it's not big, it's not thick and green, staining your fingers, your brand new pedicure, getting all nasty and thing like that when you're eating it. No, curry ain't meant to be a thick old paste, all right? And this green looking Kermit the Frog thing, no, stop with that, stop, all you need to stop. As the water dries down there, you need some anchor masala. Visit your local West Indian or Caribbean grocery store, you'll get that in there. If you can't do that, double up on this one. This is roasted ground jeera or cumin. This one is a lot more potent than the non-roasted stuff. If you guys want a video showing how to do that, let me know down in the comments below. And you know your boy will organize. You notice how beautiful that looking down there already? Pure fire. Pure fire dread. Keep an eye on things, keep stirring it because the last thing we want to do is to burn this curry. However, we do want to make sure we get rid of all that liquid that we added there. And that's what's gonna intensify the flavor of the curry. You notice that sort of slurry we got going on here now? That is gonna be the base of all the niceness we are about to do. We've got that clean crab. Now you're probably wondering, Chris, where's the herbal notes are, yeah. And that is what we're going in here with now. A tablespoon of good old Caribbean green seasoning. We're gonna hit that with some sea salt. 
give that a quick little stir because this is where and the reason why we put in the crab in now for the most part you know, let's be honest that is some maga looking little crab there like them thing free to eat it's real skinny so that is not about the meat that is about the flavor the flavor is what we're gonna get and that is why we're starting off with that crab in there yeah I hope you guys following along right so give that a quick little stir and to help balance our flavors a little bit one medium tomato just diced up give that another quick little stir and here's where we're gonna add all of that cut up potato that I showed you guys earlier and this is a great way yeah big pieces of potato don't worry, we can't overcook that crab. That crab have the shell there, like a Superman bulletproof kind of vest something. But that potato is a great way to stretch this dish for even more people. You know, you don't have enough crab, you don't have enough shrimp. You add a potato in there and you create a best gravy. We're going to give that a stir as well. And then we need water to pull it all together. Now some of you may think, Chris, or what if we use coconut milk? Yeah, you can do that. But here's the thing about that coconut milk. It's gonna make this mild. And I really want the flavor of the crab along with that shrimp to shine through. So this time we're skipping out. No love for the coconut milk today. But we are going in with water. We wanna make sure there's enough water so everything is tucked in nicely in there. Later on, we'll taste it for salt and we'll adjust it accordingly. But for now, we want to bring that up to a boil. And then we're going to reduce that to a simmer until the potato is fully cooked and that crab has just boom, 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 release all that flavor. Now, as far as the shrimp is concerned, it's so easy to overcook shrimp. So we're going to add this near the end. But for now, we're going to go in with a quarter tablespoon of Caribbean green seasoning and salt. That's it. We're going to give that a nice little stir just to coat all that shrimp with that Caribbean green seasoning and set that aside. Remember these are clean, deveined and washed with the juice of a, a lime or a lemon and cold water. We're just gonna set this aside now. Let that do a little happy little kind of marination thing, yeah? We got that bubble starting to happen there. So what we're gonna do is give that a quick stir. And I kid you not, you can already smell the niceness that crab is adding to the dish here. Turn my heat down to low, lid back on, slightly ajar, a little breathe action could happen there. And we're gonna allow that to cook till it's tender. Been about 20 minutes since we added the potato and water and everything there. You know, this is starting to break down now. So what I'm gonna use, do is using my spoon, I'm gonna break them down just a little bit more, just the edges. Cause I want that to help thicken up the gravy. I'm gonna turn up my heat now to medium just to cook off this gravy to get it nice and thick. Taste it for salt here and adjust it. Now, bearing in mind, we will be adding the shrimp in there. So you know what, hold off on the salt thing. Let us, let us add the shrimp in a bit and then we'll taste it for salt and adjust it. But for now, take up the heat to medium and help thicken up that gravy there. Three minutes on that medium heat, or closer to four minutes with the lid off. And you notice how nice and thick, well on camera it won't look thick, but you've got to trust me on that. That gravy is. Here's where we're going to add that seasoned shrimp to the pot now. We're going to give it a stir. You notice how thick it got right there, you see? All, all the thought of Chris was joking. When I said it's going to thick, it's going to get thick. And it is thick. It's looking nice and thick there now, eh? <laughs> He's just going all over the place with his TikTok, boy. Oh gosh. But did I say TikTok or TikTok? <laughs> Anyhow, as a self-respecting Trinbegonian, all you know the green weed this time. Shadow Benny. Some of you call it culantro, some of you call it soap tooth or whatever. If you can't get that, get some cilantro. Turn the heat off. Just leave it just like that. Put the lid on and let that stay like that. For three minutes, do nothing. Three minutes, nice big heavy pot, don't listen to that. Solid. Now the reason why I did that, I don't know if I explained that to you all, I took it off here now. 
Now we're gonna give it a stir. Pull all those flavors together, that shot of Benny. Now the reason why I did that, is I want the residual heat to cook the shrimp. And notice how nice and big and plump they are now. Let me hit all that little zoom if I can, so you can see what I'm talking about. Because the very last thing I want happening is to get chewy or tough shrimp. Chris here, CaribbeanPot.com, taste it for salt at this point. You know, remember, if you're not using a heavy pot like mine, which retains that residual heat, you want to cook it after you've added the shrimp. Cook it for a couple minutes, then turn off the stove, put the lid on, and let it continue uh, cooking with the residual heat. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Curry crab, potato, and shrimp. You're going to love this one, man. Give it a try, yeah? I agree.